ever scrolled through Crushbridge, hoping to be scouted by a stranger based on complete superficiality and low-key creepiness, only to be disappointed by zero tags? Hi, I'm Vidya, and I'll be your freestyle life instructor. Crushbridge, the last struck campus, but less horny Cumbridge, all about getting a second chance at that meet you. So innocent, so spontaneous. No. If you want a crush bridge, you need to finesse the system. But don't worry, your local crush bridge enthusiast is here to lead you out the darkness. Number one, you have to be blonde. Analyzing raw data shows, if you have golden locks, it's a surefire way of getting anonymous suitors. But it doesn't mean you have to be white to get a crush bridge. I mean, look at all the women of color who have blonde hair, like, like, um, um, um. Number two, you need that Cedric aesthetic. Even if you're a Fiznatsky, all you need is large earrings, wide leg trousers, and throw in a quirky clip or bandana. General rule is try and dress as if you bought all your clothes from Oxfam with your daddy's money. <laughs> Number three, the coat. Obviously, you're wearing a college puffer is like plastering a serious ID to your forehead, but if you're looking for a coat-based crush bridge, colour is key. Yeah. With lockdown, casually bumping into people in the Cindy smoking area is a thing of the past. Now, you need to bump into people with your bike. <laughs> but if you don't meddle with pedals, forget the bike. It's all about the location. Your main stage is Mainsbury's. Come on! If all else fails, you can always turn to voyeurism. Well, look, if we're all locked down and catching the eye of the guy that's doing his daily run is the closest thing you'll get to your pure gym fantasies. And at least they'll know where to find you post Rona. Yep. That's as creepy as it sounds. But look, at the end of the day, receiving a crush bridge is just a social construct. You don't need to be validated by someone's anonymous post. You are not just two letters at another letter. You are the whole alphabet. And you know what? Send yourself that crush bridge through self-love. Wait, no, 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 wait, 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 no, no. Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Good? Great, great. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Me? Oh, I'm fine. I'm doing... I'm fine. I'm quite an awkward person, quite an awkwardly clumsy person, I would say. Uh, disappointingly clumsy, as my year six history teacher once called it. I've broken quite a lot of stuff in my time. Some lamps, my mum's anniversary gifts, my mum's hopes and dreams for me as her daughter. <laughs> I joke. That was never there to begin with. So I was on this date recently, um, and you guessed it, clumsy old me, something ended up happening. Um, so awkward. We were sitting there, and um, I, I broke, you know, I just broke his penis. I joke, I joke, I joke. I um, it was just his self-worth, just his self-worth, nothing else. I wouldn't dream of doing anything else. So I was sitting there, wearing these dungarees, feeling so great, like super hot, and um, I needed a wee, so I decided I was going to do a wee, and um, not at the table, it's not that kind of date, um, no, I went upstairs, and I went to the toilet, and then I realised it was at that moment, I just kind of felt the awkwardness of a dungaree, you know, when you, you could you have to get stark naked on a toilet, it's only when I was naked on a toilet that I realised how awkward dungarees are. I then started reminiscing about all of the really awkward, weird things you might do, which you don't realise are awkward and weird until they're happening or have just happened. And there was a girl in um, primary school, Ellen Jenkins. Look her up. That is her real name. Ellen was a double panther. She was a double panther, you know, whilst most women were trying to double bra to make their boobs look bigger. Ellen was Ellen was going for a double pant and unless she was trying to go for a heavy set vagina, I um I don't really know what her goal was. Ellen was also the girl at school where um sitting in maths class, had a pen in my mouth, just chewing on that, doing a bit of long division. Pull the pen out, 
instantly her finger in my mouth. In with a little smile at the end, a little <laughs> at the end for me. So I had a few questions uh, as I unpacked this event uh, later on in my therapy. And uh, I was thinking about it and I thought, one, why was Ellen Jenkins so close to me that she could instantly get her finger in and out of my mouth without as much as a run to get to me? Two, why did she enjoy it so much with a little smile at the end? And three, why did I enjoy it so much? I'm joking, I'm joking. I just came in my pants a little. I was an overachieving child, but it's very hard not to be when you're only half white and the other half's Chinese. I'm not saying that there was a lot of pressure per se, I'm just saying that the entire reason I left my home country and all my family behind and gave up my hopes and dreams wasn't for you not to get an A. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And so with this in mind, you're seven, and you're gearing up for that UCAS form. And what's the thing to do? Why, learn an instrument, of course. And the logical choice, oh well, I think it's clear. Pick up the guitar and become Joni Mitchell in a year. One crucial thing I hadn't considered was I'm not white, blonde or thin. And so my heritage dictates that I play. The violin. So 15 years later, here I am. Oh, the violin would be really cool. I was sold a fucking scam. Instead of sitting around the campfire and strumming kumbaya, I'm practicing the Mendelssohn concerto from afar. And the worst thing is I can't get dreadlocks because we all know you're exempt from cultural appropriation if you look a bit unkempt and play the guitar and although it really pains me some people like to say that this little first world problem doesn't affect my day to day <laughs> Well, I can't look out of train windows or write sad lyrics in my notes or have a second Instagram where I post shitty quotes and instead of being fun and cool at every party now I'm stuck talking to the music students and getting in a row about our fingering techniques. Yep. Incidentally, mine are really good. Oh, 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 no, I mean really. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> Assalamu alaikum. I am Abdul Ali Mustafa, and this is my wife. These include riding camels and eating spicy food. Adam, why aren't you a doctor yet? Dad, I'm 13. 13? Well, when I was your age, I was 15. Fine, right, Habibi, come help me steal some jobs. Where are your jobs? I'll take two. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I have your lunch for school. Dad, that's a bomb. I know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob capsized in my eye. <laughs>
do yeah, yeah enough yeah the following presentation is a short guide to the current state of coronavirus vaccines three vaccines have been produced one by Pfizer a company with a history of oppressing ethnic minorities one by the University of Oxford a university with a history of oppressing ethnic minorities and one by Moderna partially funded by Bill Gates a man with a history of actually he's all right I think these vaccines work by injecting non-contagious, weakened or inactive parts of coronavirus to stimulate an immune response, and their efficacy is between up to 90% and 95%. Russia has also developed a vaccine called Sputnik V with an efficacy of 92%, which works by launching the patient into outer space. Listeners should note that there is a difference between efficacy and effectiveness. Efficacy is how the vaccine performs under ideal and controlled conditions. Effectiveness is how the vaccine performs in the real world. This is like the difference between the grades you get at school and the destruction of your soul and identity at university. The Oxford vaccine can be stored at normal fridge temperatures, but the Moderna vaccine must be stored at around minus 20 degrees C. The Pfizer vaccine must be stored at around minus 78 degrees C, which means it can only be safely transported inside Jeremy Hunt where the heart is supposed to be. In the UK, the cost per dose of vaccine is between three and 25 pounds. So in the US, prices are expected to be no more than $3,000 or two vital organs. The UK government has ordered around 150 million doses of the Pfizer, Oxford and Moderna vaccines and around 350 million vaccine doses in total. This means that one man was right all along and immigration really is out of control. Side effects of the vaccine include muscle aches, fevers, headaches, nausea, inflammation and fatigue. Students who have been at Cambridge for more than a week probably won't notice anything. If you're worried about vaccines injecting microchips, containing mercury or causing autism, you don't need to do anything except lick every lamppost within a five mile radius and let Darwin do his work. Given the transmission rate of the coronavirus, around 45 million people will need to be vaccinated in order to achieve herd immunity. The vaccines are administered as two doses three weeks apart, which will take at least seven weeks. This means that if we're lucky, people will be vaccinated just in time for coronavirus to mutate and finish the job. Merry Christmas. Have you ever wandered through the streets of Cambridge thinking, no one even knows who I am? Or forgotten what college you go to? Or desperately wanted to be the main character? We're here to help you. I'm Ryder. Hi, I'm Ames, and we're here to sell you some quality stash. Stash. Artisanal, high grade, premium fabric. Something that all should have. Offering a range of products such as jumpers, puffers. With pockets for your tissues, for your salty, salty tea. Caffeine pills for essay crises, or just for breakfast. We have stash from everywhere. We deliver to all the colleges, right to your door. Where? Girton. No chance. No, too, too far. We deliver to most colleges. Right to your door. Back again. That's the fourth time today. Tell her to piss off. Customer service. Products are of the extremely low price of just seven to nine pounds per bead. Each gown costs four pounds to make, but a hundred times that to sell. What a great deal! Don't miss out. Order today. Eight week terms and conditions apply. Products may not be as advertised and may cause side effects such as lack of taste, for example, causing you to think that Lola's is a good night out. Cool. 011-011-34 exclamation mark hash 582493q829484 exclamation mark L219FI today. Hi, my name is Shakira and I'm black. I like to preface all of my sets with that because then it means if you don't laugh at my jokes, that's a hate crime. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Since being back in Cambridge, there's been an elephant in the room. 
the subject of racism as a result of the tumultuous events of the summer and all of the social unrest that's been going on. I can't tell you how many times this term someone has made a vague allusion to recent events or the current situation. That's the one I hate the most, the situation, capital S. A situation is your dad cheating on your mum with the au pair. A situation is Greg's running out of vegan sausage rolls. White supremacy? Not a situation. Call it what it is. Fuck euphemisms. The situation sounds like a 1970s disco band. I also think it's really funny how all the different societies were scrambling to make these statements condemning racism and promising to make their committees more diverse. Can you imagine the board meetings? Okay, chaps. What are we going to do about all this police brutality malarkey? Well, Cornelius, we have to do something to save face. You're absolutely right, Humphrey. Well, boys, I see no other way forward. We'll have to get some coloureds in. Uh, I know, I know, I don't like it any more than you do, but we have no other choice. I know that what they're doing is well-intentioned, but I do find it hilarious that it took an international movement for them to realise that they're not diverse enough. Like, really? Three of you are called Ben, and you all look like different evolutions of the same Pokemon. Ben 1, Ben 2, Ben 3. No self-awareness. So yeah, the societies are really desperate to get some people of colour in now. I mean, really desperate. Oh, they might as well go and stand on King's Parade and beg. Any spare Negroes? Any spare Negroes? White people, you're not allowed to laugh at that joke. I'm watching you. Being black is fashionable now. It's in demand. I'm going to make myself a t-shirt that says, I was black before it was cool. I'm going to start gatekeeping blackness like how people gatekeep bands. Like, you know how they say, you can't wear a Nirvana shirt, you don't even listen to them. Instead, I'm going to be like, oh, you're an Obama fan? Name one of his war crimes. <laughs> well, I've been taking advantage of this. I've applied for loads of shit. I'm on like five different committees now. I don't even know what some of them are about. I just get these emails and, we missed you at the meeting today, Shakira. <laughs> Who are you? I, there's only two other black people in Cambridge, so it's been a walk in the park. I've uh, just submitted my application to be Grand Wizard of the Cambridge branch of the KKK. Waiting to hear back. Hashtag more black CEOs. <laughs> It's been a rough time, just very fraught. But white people in particular are finding it really difficult, poor souls. Have you guys heard of this allyship fatigue bullshit that's going around? It's basically when white people get tired from doing the bare minimum. Just posted a black square on Instagram. A spa day is so needed. A girl at my college actually recently told me that she emailed her supervisors about how her activism is affecting her work. What would she even say? Hi, Professor. Sorry I couldn't hand in an essay this week. I just found out that black people are human and it's shaken me to my fucking core. My head's gone. <gasps> just wait until they find out we can read. Mind equals blown. All right, guys, that's it from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and what a pleasure it is to be performing at this year's Increased Vulnerability to COVID-19 Smoker. That's right, brothers and sisters, this pandemic is actually targeting black and minority ethnic people so disproportionately, it's actually being headhunted as the UK's next commissioner of police. Now, listen, I, I actually want BME people not only to get representation in comedy, but actually get to the stage where we're, we're overrepresented, okay? And you actually see this in other areas of society, right? The Premier League, um, Destiny's Child, the prison system. Now, one thing about being BME is that it means, of course, you have BME parents, and, and I, for one, am really missing my dad during this lockdown. Uh, let me tell you, this Arab could work in an abattoir because he butchers English idiomatic phrases on the daily. Dad, have you seen this? Salah hasn't scored in ages. He's just scored three goals in one game. Mashallah, son. It is like uh, the English say, uh, sometimes there is no bus arriving and then sometimes two bus arriving. Maybe even three sometimes. Mashallah. 
Of course, since the time my dad tried to tell me to break a leg before opening night. Eh, eh, Ms. Hassan, good luck with your belay tonight. Eh, inshallah, you hurt yourself very badly, yes? And of course, the time that he said I shouldn't be finding my degree so hard because, let's face it, biochemistry isn't rocket science. Remember, Hassan, yani, this is not very hard, huh? It is not as if you are, uh, yani, how the English say, studying the lettuce. Now, one of the things I miss about being at home with my dad is going to the mosque, right? And it actually reminds me of a, of a debate that we had back at school um, in, in religious education. Uh, and we were talking about radicalization, right? And someone made the following point. Now, I actually think that Muslims need to do more in their local BME communities to, to just stop this radicalization happening at source, for example, in their mosques. The problem is, most of these people that become terrorists don't actually go to mosques, right? They're usually very bad at following their religion. So it's not like, it's not like there's a terrorist corner in the mosque where all the people who refer to bin Laden as a sheikh sit. That just, that just doesn't happen, okay? Let me give you an example of a conversation that just doesn't happen at the mosque. Hey, Mohammed, what are you up to this weekend? Honestly, not much. Not much, you know. Um, Saturday, I'm watching the game, obviously. Sunday, I'm, I'm playing football in the morning. And then in the afternoon, me and the boys are doing 9-11. 9-11? Is that this weekend? Yeah, yeah, it is. God, it sneaks up on you, doesn't it? Well, you know, that's what we're hoping. Of course you are, you Islamist. All right, well, have a safe flight. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> right, that, that just doesn't happen. Okay, let me give you an example of a conversation you're much more likely to hear at mosque. Oi, salam, bro, long time, man. What's, what's going on? What's happening? Oi, brother, keep... Keep on it down low, yeah, but man's actually making bare peas out here, drug dealing and that, you get me? You, you're a drug dealer now, brother? Ye <clears throat> a registered pharmacist, actually, brother, just graduated, actually, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, brother, congratulations. All right, I'll see you later, bro. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, brother. And remember, don't forget what the Imam said I must today, yeah? Always, death to the West. I'm just joking with you. I'm joking.